thank you for joining us on our webinar this morning. Um, we are going to be discussing embracing your culture, um, a little bit on diversity, and um, we're really looking forward to being able to have each of you here joining us so that we can continue on with this important conversation, um, especially within the light of where we are um, today and within our world. So I see this as being a, a very relevant topic for us. Um, and we are fortunate enough to be able to have Jim Warren here with us as a presenter. Um, he is working with us here at the USAD um, and comes from South Dakota. Um, he's been connected um, with us in the past and he's come back on to join and assist. And um, I'm really looking forward to being able to hear all of what he has to share with us. And I know this is going to be a wonderful opportunity for you folks to be able to gain a lot of information and knowledge in order to be able to assist you as you move on in making your decisions for the future. And that's really a big part of what our webinar, webinar series is that the USED is offering at this point um, through our project Career Pathways to Arizona's Future. And um, I'm hoping that you all will be able to continue joining us. And then all of the youth here on with us, um, please be sure to share this information with your friends, other students, other folks that you think um, really could benefit from each of the different topics that we are going to be offering um, coming up in the future. Um, so thank you again very much. And feel free to, as Jeff offered, to um, ask any questions in the chat box as they come up. We will get to them. And we will also be doing question and answer sessions at the very end. Um, I do want to mention now that for our particular schools that are connected with our project, as we had mentioned previous, there is a link that has been sent out to you folks um, in order to join us um, at 10.15 to 10.45 afterwards for a focus session. And um, so at this point, Jim, um, I'm going to hand the floor off to you. And we're excited to be able to have you um, to speak. Um, we have a PowerPoint presentation that will be coming up as well here, everyone. So um, thank you for joining. I'm excited to, to move on. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much, Wendy. And uh, I appreciate you being here. And I see some old friends online. So hello and good morning. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm coming from San Diego. I call myself a Lakota beach bum. So uh, that's my tribe. I'm a Lakota and I've uh, lived in San Diego since 1989. So I actually played in the Holiday Bowl here in 1985 as a college football player. And I really liked the city and uh, found out that I enjoyed the ocean very much. So now I pursued my uh, graduate studies after my professional career in football in San Diego at San Diego State University. So I ended up getting my uh, 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 master's degree from San Diego State after Arizona State. So uh, ended up staying here and working at uh, San Diego State for 22 years. And now I'm consulting and working, as Wendy said, with University of South Dakota. And that's my homelands, which I'll be referring to soon. And uh, uh, again, it's a wonderful experience to be working with Arizona again. I grew up in Arizona, and uh, so it's great to be able to be part of the team at the Sonoran Center for Excellence and Disabilities. So uh, I'll be sharing a bit of my family experience and some of my personal uh, experiences with disability, with culture, and some of those things with you today, as well as have you kind of think about, uh, the, particularly you young people are so skilled with digital and the virtual world, you know, us uh, older people, us elders in training, I like to call us, are, you know, usually relying on our teenagers to uh, help us with technology and things of that nature. So it's wonderful to be able to uh, um, have that opportunity to uh, work with young people. So uh, again, I see you as having a great impact for future generations, and you're part of a philosophy that I was raised with regarding the seventh generation philosophy that I'll be addressing uh, later today. So uh, here's a little bit. I'll share my screen for uh, hopefully, uh, can you give me a thumbs up if my screen is all set here? Very good. So good. hello, welcome. Um, I'm uh, addressing a lot of things regarding uh, disability and in Arizona particularly 
And a lot of my experience in working with tribal vocational rehabilitation programs. So uh, there you see my WSD Productions logo, which is a medicine wheel. Uh, many tribal people are aware of medicine wheel philosophies that I was raised with. And then you see the uh, eagle and the wheelchair uh, sign, which is a common sign for disability in the United States as well as throughout the world. So as you see here, I wear many hats. I own my business. I'm an entrepreneur. So I created Warrior Society Development Company. And uh, I have a youth division. And I have the WSD Productions, where I make films and uh, uh, various documentaries that I'm working on currently. I'm also working part time back in my homelands of South Dakota. So it's wonderful to be creating programs for tribal members with disabilities back, uh, back in South Dakota through the Oyate Circle. And Oyate is my language for the people. And we're all in this for the people. And, uh, and I'm a consultant for the Sonoran Center for Disabilities in Arizona. So I get to wear many hats, which is a, a wonderful experience for me. So I like to have that ability to be able to uh, uh, have these various dreams and uh, goals in my world of work. So it's obviously very important to have that balance in life. So we'll be uh, addressing some different uh, questions and things of that nature. And then achieving success through balance is a theme that I often teach. And then the power of the mind, body, soul, and heart. So think about yourself uh, and how the, some of these things apply to your life as an individual, for your family, for your school, your your friends, and eventually your world that has suddenly changed. Did I, am I okay there, Jeff? Yeah, you froze for a little bit, but you're okay now. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Uh, so again, uh, this is living at the center of your world is kind of a philosophy that I have. I wanted to share some information about my background, uh, my family. And great, great grandpa Stabber was one of the 17 leaders that went to the White House in 1872 to negotiate peace with uh, President Grant. So Red Cloud was the uh, leader and uh, Grandpa Stabber was there with him. And uh, so these pictures were taken in Washington, DC uh, by a, um, an English museum curator. He was very interested in native culture and he happened to be in Washington, DC. So we got pictures of all of the tribal leaders. So it's wonderful to have this picture of Grandpa Stabber and being able to have that. And uh, here's another grandfather of mine. This was taken in 1899. And Kills on Horseback is his name, and that's who I'm named after. So my Lakota name is Toshunka Akahwachakte, which is Kills on Horseback in English. So it's wonderful to have this multi-generational knowledge of my background, my family background, and some of the philosophies that we have in Indian country is, uh, have we made our ancestors proud today? And those are some of the things that uh, uh, I'll be sharing with you, those philosophies that I was taught as an Oglala Lakota tribal member. Many uh, people, when they hear uh, Oglala Lakota, many people don't know what that is. And in America, we're called Sioux, the Great Sioux Nation. But most tribes were renamed uh, through European contacts. So a lot of our tribes are, uh, have different names. For instance, in Arizona, Navajo is the Diné Nation. You know, so that's what they've been calling themselves for thousands of years. And, uh, but with the English language, we have different references. So my family ancestry, you just saw a bit of that. I come from great parents. I'm very fortunate that mom and dad were awesome parents and uh, supported my brother and I. And uh, mom gave me great examples of being proud of who I am as an Oglala Lakota. She grew up on Pine Ridge Reservation, grew up without running water or power, uh, living in a, a shanty town outside of Rapid City to go to school and work because in the early 60s, uh, Indians were not allowed to live in housing and go into stores yet. They had no Indians allowed signs back in those days. So that's what my mom had to grow up with as an eight-year-old. Uh, so Stabber is my mom's name from Grandpa Stabber. So uh, Toshunka Kamachakte I shared is my Lakota name. My upbringing is I'm a urban Indian, they call me, because I grew up in Tempe, Arizona. And the reason I grew up in Arizona is because mom and dad weren't able, after they got married, they couldn't rent a house because again, Indians were not allowed to live in housing yet 
in Rapid City and many of the uh, uh, landlords and things would not rent to Indian people. That's why we had Oshkosh Indian Camp, which was kind of a tent city where my mom uh, grew up going to school. So uh, with that upbringing as an urban Indian, uh, I had a real unique experience as a young person uh, with travel because I went to kindergarten in Bangkok, Thailand. My dad worked uh, with international finance and he worked with the uh, federal government. So we were in embassy housing in Bangkok, Thailand. So I've been fortunate to go back in my adult years and see where I used to live and go to school in Thailand. And that obviously had a unique experience with, on me as a Lakota living, um, an American citizen living and going to school in uh, Thailand. Uh, after Thailand, dad got a job in uh, Cuernavaca, Mexico. So I went to first grade in Mexico, and then that was a big culture shock, if you will, in terms of being an American in Mexico now. So as well as being native, uh, uh, many people in Thailand thought I was just a big Thai kid, and many people in Mexico thought I was uh, a local member as well as a Mexican citizen. So they'd speak their language to me, and I didn't know what they were saying. So fortunately, I was able to speak some Lakota back, and they didn't know what I was saying either. And then we started speaking English, and then we could communicate. So that gave me a unique experience as a young person in those developmental years to uh, be able to have that experience and share that information. Uh, again, South Dakota to Arizona, I shared, and I went to Arizona State University. So here I am working with University of Arizona, and I'm a Sun Devil. Uh, so that's an unusual situation. But uh, um, both universities are getting better at working with Indian people, and I'm glad to be a part of that uh, process. So I'll share a little bit of my professional football and my experience here in San Diego. So when you think of Indian country, many people think of Hollywood and movies. Uh, so many movies are based on uh, uh, our tribes in the plains, uh, my Lakota tribe and others uh, with the feathers, right? The many people think uh, of Indian people that wear feathers, but as you see, most tribes did not wear feathers like we did. So if anything that you come out with uh, knowledge of Indian country is the diversity of the tribes. And Arizona has a unique uh, diversity of tribes with 19 tribal nations in Arizona alone, along with significant urban populations from other tribes outside of Arizona, living in Phoenix, Tucson, Flagstaff, and other cities throughout the state. So there's a lot of uh, tribal nations, as you see here on the map of Arizona, you see big chunks of uh, Indian country there. Uh, you see Oklahoma is there as well with big chunks of Indian country and they just had a Supreme Court ruling that um, has uh, Oklahoma now mostly Indian land and that was just a few months ago. And then you see up in South Dakota, my tribal nations in which I live in uh, as well. So that's kind of a breakdown. There's the entrance to my tribal nation, Pine Ridge in South Dakota. So I get to go home a lot working with University of South Dakota. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to travel since February when we got back from Europe. Uh, but we've been home now due to the pandemic as many of you are as well. So we're getting uh, used to a new normal in our daily lives with education, communication, you know, it's impacting everything, family, personal, professional, education. Uh, there's a few pictures of my homelands. Uh, the bottom left picture, you can see my mom standing there across from the, uh, the ravine there where she used to pick mushrooms back in the 1930s with grandpa. So uh, it's wonderful uh, to have that. Mom's 81 years old and uh, uh, so she's still working and teaching at South Dakota State University and uh, she's really still making an impact uh, that my brother Don and I can follow her lead still. And then my father having MS, multiple sclerosis, he had MS for 37 years. Uh, before they had uh, the treatments that they do today. So I saw true strength through my father on how he uh, dealt with disability on an everyday basis. So what a wonderful role model, because he was a, you know, he was a great guy in terms of humor. Uh, you know, he's 6'4", he was 6'4", and then he goes, well, son, I shrunk down to 4'6", I use a wheelchair now. So, uh, you know, that's a wonderful example of how you handle trauma and try to deal with some of those challenges that we have in our lives. And he was a great role model for me, not only uh, to show strength and going to work every day with those challenges, but being able to uh, be accepting and having that ability 
uh, as a person with a disability, he was a, a great role model for me. Uh, here's a little bit of my wife's tribe. Uh, she's up from Northern California in the Redwood country, Bigfoot country. Uh, I always say she likes me because I have big feet. I wear size 17 shoes, so, uh, so I can run around barefoot around her lands and get the Bigfoot legend going again. But there's some of her uh, traditional uh, things uh, you see in those pictures that they still do today. They're another tribe with strong traditional connections. And you see her hoopa cap. It's not feathers, it's a basket cap. Uh, that picture of us with the flag behind us is at uh, a presidential inaugural ball in Washington, D.C. So we have got to go to the inaugural ball and celebrate the pre new president. And uh, um, the sash that she's wearing is a woodpecker sash on deer hide. So those are her traditional uh, garments. And my tuxedo, you can't see, but it's beaded and has some beads and some things from my tribal nation. And it was interesting for us to be at the, at the ball and dancing and all the, everybody in tuxedos and fancy gowns. And boy, at least 20 times people came up to my wife and I and goes, oh, are you Indian? Can we take your picture? You know, so it was interesting to have that experience. And then after 20 times, I go to Jill, I go, hey, follow my lead, let's do a joke. And I go, hey, are you white people? Can I take your picture? You know, <laughs> so it's an interesting dynamic to have, you know, they were just so interested to see Indian people because they don't see us very often in America. So that was a fun experience uh, at the inaugural ball. And there's some of the tribal lands that my wife lives in, which is very beautiful. And uh, unfortunately, they're dealing with a lot of smoke and fire danger. Uh, I was just up there and a lot of fires and smoke. So. Uh, hopefully we uh, are able to avoid any fires uh, on the reservation there. So some of the things I want to share with you today is with my warrior society education philosophy and leadership principle. Uh, these are some of the things that I use in my daily life to try to uh, uh, stay on track to keep addressing my goals and aspirations. I'm 55 years old and I still have goals. I want to someday win the Academy Award and you know, uh, hold up my trophy. I'd like to thank whoever, you know, for my academy. So I'm still dreaming as an old man. And I know you young people have a lot of dreams as well, as well as you other elders in training out there. We all have dreams all the time. And what do we do to accomplish those dreams? So again, when you think of these uh, elements, these are some of the things that I use in my daily living for success. And here's some in my youth division in my company, I do a lot of football and life skills and athletic camps and uh, filmmaking seminars and workshops. So I get to do a lot of things in Indian country, which is wonderful uh, to be able to work with the young people, the next generation of leaders I'm a firm believer that a member of the seventh generation from the Wounded Knee time frame, the seventh generation is here, the young people. And one of you native kids, I think, will be president of the United States. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Particularly now with an election coming up, could you imagine seeing an Indian person up there running for the president of the United States? It might be one of you. Never stop dreaming. I'm a firm believer that one of the seventh generation is gonna do something great for us as a result of that prophecy. So always dream, always strive and do whatever you can to get unique experiences, whether it be athletics, sports, um, the arts and sciences, you know, uh, I'm not good with statistics and math, but some of you are, you may be the next statistician to impact Indian country. Uh, whatever your dreams are, pursue them and do something, you know, about it. And whoever you are as a culture, uh, actually, the biggest culture or group in the United States are people with disabilities. So my father and now myself as a recent member of uh, the disability group, I have some disability issues now as I grow older, but that's a big part of our community. Disability is just a natural part. There's usually someone in a family that has a disability or someone in your workplace or someone in your school, in your inner circle of friends that may have a disability. And some of them you may not even notice. Not all disabilities are wheelchairs or blindness or not being able to hear. Wheel uh, those are just the physical elements of disability, what we can see, but there's other disabilities with emotional and mental aspects that many people are dealing with and we need to do what we can to be aware of that. 
So use cultural diversity. Uh, you know, this, these are some uh, definitions of diversity and culture. And think to yourself, what does it mean to you? Uh, some of you, like me, are a member of a cultural group. I'm a member of the Oglala Lakota. So my culture, my race, if you will, is American Indian, Native American, indigenous <clears throat> person. We have many uh, labels in Indian country. But I'm a member of the Oglala Lakota nation. And my father also has Viking blood. Uh, he has European Scandinavian blood. So I'm also a member of another strong tribal nation in Northern Europe. So I have that uh, perspective and that upbringing, and I, as I said, on some of those perspectives. And people are learning now diversity in the workplace is a huge moneymaker. Um, we, as diverse members of diversity, that includes race, uh, gender, um, uh, disability, as I mentioned, those things are now uh, assets to businesses. Because uh, now they're finally realizing that we need to have more people representing people that are shopping, people that are looking for our services. So you as young people have an opportunity to think of new businesses. Uh, you're already, many of you probably on your phone right now looking at something. So, uh, you know, you already have that ability. It's a natural part of your life. How can you use that phone to create a business, to do something with your dreams? So that's empowerment, having that confidence and those skills and the strength to try something new and be able to get something out there. So uh, quality of life improves with employment. Uh, you know, so if you have dreams, what are your dreams? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jim, I just want to jump in right now real quick, because I think given the fact that we had just offered a little information about culture and diversity, I'm curious sure. as to what our um, participants' definitions themselves are mm -hmm. in regards to what is culture. And I think right now might be a good place for us to jump in with the Mentimeter and be able to do a little work cloud in order to get their definitions at this point on what culture is and then we can see how that'll change up a little bit after we've continued on with the presentation um so jeff i think he's still on and he was going to be pulling up our mentee um but i don't see him in view right jim, now jeff can you hear us i'm gonna stop your screen share is that okay yeah, or I can get off it either way, whatever works out. Oh, yeah. I'm probably best if I don't push any buttons, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But what would work best for you? <clears throat> Should I stop my share? Uh, no, we're good. Okay, thank you. All right. Does everybody thank see you, that? Thank you, Jeff. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Perfect timing, Wendy. Thank you. So yeah, of course. Perspective, everybody, young folks, as well as uh, other professionals that are joining us today, uh, if you could provide just a sentence, you know, what is culture to you? You know, well, how does it, uh, what does it mean in your life? You know, we all have a cultural lens. I see my world through a Lakota lens that has disability perspectives, you know, and that's just my life with my parents and growing up and my family. So all of you have those elements as well. So think about culture. And not only race, but, you know, gender issues, men and women, you know, that's a culture as well. So I guess I better be quiet and let them do their work. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see that in the chat, um, Jeff has given some directions there. So you're going to menti.com. And then once you get to that uh, website, you're going to see where it's going to open up. What is your definition of culture? Once you put in your passcode of those numbers, 31, 74, 30, and 2. We have some people that are doing that right now. So we'll see what, what pops up. All right. Nice. So, so far it looks like two folks have, have offered. We'll wait a little more because we have a number of you on here and we want to get as many people to participate as we can. Oh, good ones, very good. It's always fun to see how it's changing up as you guys are adding more information. Thank you for taking part here. 
We can make this word cloud slide available to you folks later as well. If anybody is interested in seeing it in the future. Yeah, being part mm -hmm. of creating some, a new poster. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It's our own little art. <laughs> Someone just put up traditional foods. All right. I'm thinking about a good buffalo mm -hmm. steak right now. <laughs> <laughs> and heritage, another person listed in the chat, heritage. Wonderful. And for anybody that hasn't um, seen or utilized Munti in the past, um, the responses that people give most often are going to get larger in the center. So more folks are adding the words belief and family, and those ones will get larger if they are uh, common responses. So we have upbringing also in the chat now. Excellent. <clears throat> nice. <clears throat> mm. Yep, family is a big one as far as where we start with our culture. You know, our culture is built in the beginnings yeah. as, uh, as we are you know, um, being brought up from, from youth to adult and um, family is a big part of that. But as you folks are growing up and making your own choices and developing your own identity and culture for yourself and making those choices, that would be where, um, you know, you're able to, to grow and develop with this and, and have your own. creating our identity. So inherency, another word I see. Excellent, job, thank everybody. you everyone. <laughs> oh, it's nice to see some young faces out there. Good morning, thanks for being with us. <laughs> Do you like playing? Do you like playing videos? Did you hear her? <clears throat> I, I didn't understand what you said. Can you repeat that again? Like, or you also can um, type like in the chat. Playing videos? Do you like playing videos? Oh, oh videos. Like <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I know that my son and my grandson keep trying to get me to play them. Uh, I try, but I'm not very good at them. I need to go back to the old uh, Pac-Man and Atari and those things that you don't probably don't even know about. <laughs> when I was a young person with our oh, pitiful play. little video game. Guess what game I play? Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> and there's another business. Young ones are getting great opportunities to create new applications and video games. And geez, they're the, another uh, company that sees a value of culture and young people is, wow, let's get their opinions and we'll make some cool games and they'll make money. So why not right. be part of that, making money something you like to do, you know? <clears throat> right. So I think we have a good, um, you know, a good response now on our mentees. So we can take that one down at this point, given time. And um, we're at 934 and I want to make sure that we're able to continue on with the, the culture portion of this. Should I uh, share my screen again? Sure. All righty. And uh, yeah, let me know how Great, I'm doing. Thank you. I'll try to move forward and not tell too many stories. <laughs> but again, as you saw there, many of you mentioned it and the biggest one was family. So that's where we get, and that's logical when you think of a developmental element, when you think of connection with mother earth and connection with our moms. And that's where we get it, you know, from the first day of birth, that connection with mother. And, you guys, and mother earth is part guys, of that uh, philosophy. Oh, remember to mute your screen so we don't have background noise, please. Thank you. So all people can work. So what is your dream? If you have to work, why not do something that you love? You know, who here wants a terrible job with low pay and that you, that's miserable? Nobody wants that. So think about what your skills are, what your interests are, so that you can apply that to your future careers. And then work is going to be awesome. 
you know, it won't feel like work. It's a, it feels like a passion. Mm. It feels like your life, something you want to do. That's the empower. Uh, that's the empowerment element that we have. So here you see a picture of an iceberg. You know, many people see a successful people and they go, oh, wow, look at, you know, that, how easy their life is, right? Oh, wow, you know, they just have it so good. Well, did they just lay on the couch and uh, wake up one day and have success? Absolutely not. They had all those elements working hard, those good habits, you know, that dedication. Uh, sometimes you're going to fail in business or fail a class, and that's okay because through that failure, you learn something that you can apply and retake the class or start a different business. Just you're always learning. And if you're not failing in something, you're not trying. So I've had different uh, companies that I started that didn't work out, but fortunately, this company is working very well for me. So it's awesome to have that wonderful element of success. And uh, there many people just see the iceberg, but all that hard work that you need to do, uh, like professional athletes, they go, oh, wow, look how wonderful that they have it. But no one's watching them on TV when they're spending thousands of hours working out, studying plays, all the mental and emotional aspects of preparation. And here's another, uh, here's another one, the tree, seven habits. So, and think and do these habits, always think about them. This is a book that I use for my undergraduate students. And they have a cool short workbook that kind of goes through it quickly. So check out the workbook and look through these seven habits. And that, it makes sense to me because of the seven generation philosophy, the seven constellations of stars, the seven directions, all of that makes sense to me. Uh, so check this out, it's a pretty good reference that I use to try to uh, keep me on track for success. So teamwork, uh, my experience with teamwork was uh, sports. So I got to learn to work with different people from different cultures. And that expanded at the college level and expanded even more at the professional level. So when I had the, uh, those experiences with multiple cultures and then all those cultures coming together as a team, and that's what the element is, is any successful team that's winning championships found a way to bring those cultures together so that they could work together in an effective way. And the outcome is winning championships. So the next webinar is focusing on health and wellness and balance. And these are some of the things that uh, I'm coming from in terms of uh, my perspective. So what is balance to you? Think what is balance, uh, direction and wellness? What does that mean to you? Put that in your mind and say, okay, how, why, why is this guy talking about balance? Well, here we are as human beings, as two-legged species in the four elements. So here you have uh, the mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual elements as human beings, and we're always maneuvering around those elements. So when you think of the mental elements, our brains, you know what, you're in school now, uh, you know, you're learning things, you're building your brains, you're working out your brain. And then again, that education and that information you're putting in there is going to be used in the future somehow. Uh, maybe not only in employment, but, you know, use it in terms of uh, family, uh, social elements, you know, how do we work together in teamwork and get things back on track, you know. So this is your mental elements. And of course, your your viewpoint, your culture impacts uh, how the mental elements work as well. Uh, spirituality, uh, my spirituality is uh, the Lakota way. And we have many ceremonies that we follow as well. So again, the spiritual connection that we all have, you may or may not participate in it and that's okay. Uh, but we have some sort of connection spiritually and that's all up to us how we want to do that. And here we are emotionally. Uh, I feel today, people, it's easier to say I love you with an emoji versus actually saying the words. Uh, so when you have these, and but uh, this is a great tool, don't get me wrong, it's wonderful to get these emojis. I use it all the time, you know, uh, they have those avatars now, so I, I like it because it makes me look younger, hey, so, <laughs> but it's uh, cool to have this option, but don't forget the human element as well when you uh, send text and something, but give grandma or grandpa or an elder in the family or someone, just give them a call and that five minutes will make a huge difference. So that's the emotional connection that we all have as human beings. And from a tribal aspect, here's some of our physical connection to ceremony, to culture. 
So these folks are in good shape. I always say fancy dancers and hoop dancers are great athletes, you know, and if they're on the powwow circuit, they're essentially professional athletes. So, uh, but they're sharing their passion through culture, through dance and singing and drumming. So this is my culture. This is what I love to do when I go home is seeing our people celebrating our culture that's been here for thousands of years. So what I'm discussing is balance between these four human elements. So how do you balance these elements in your life, in your structure? You know, it may not be the medicine wheel philosophy that I'm sharing, but this is the balance that we use from a traditional element is how do we balance these human elements so that we can be at the center of our circle as best we can. Uh, there'd be something that will pull you off balance sometimes. Uh, uh, let's use a school example. Here we are, uh, let's say you're having dinner with friends and family and you're feeling good and you're balanced uh, at the center of your circle as best you can. And then you forget, oops, I got an exam tomorrow. So suddenly you got to read three, four chapters tonight and get ready for your test in the morning. So what happens to you in your circle? You're pulled up towards the mental, right? You're unbalanced towards the mental because suddenly now you got to put all this information in your head in a short period of time. Now, what's happening to you physically after about midnight? You're starting to get tired, correct? And then what's happening to you emotionally at one, two in the morning when you just read a chapter and you don't remember what you just read, you know? And then spiritually, what are you doing when you walk into that test? You know, help me, please, you know? Uh, and then you get back to the mental element where you take the test. So again, how do we stay balanced? And that's just the an education example, but it can be applied to so many different things in life. So however you want to do the medicine wheel philosophy is up to you because it provides that connection for all of us. And obviously I connect to this because it's part of my indigenous knowledge and teachings as a young person. Uh, my mom uh, was always teaching us the Lakota way, my brother and I, uh, in terms of how do we apply Lakota way living in urban Phoenix, Arizona. So that was a unique element. And when you think of sustainability and farming, someone put farming up as part of culture and you're absolutely right. Because when you think of the first to do uh, irrigation and uh, some of those things in the Americas was the Anasazi tribe in the Phoenix area. So they had great uh, skill in uh, farming in a desert. Uh, so they were able to do it uh, thousands of years ago. So again, those balance things that we're discussing how do you want to balance the star knowledge? that's we're all related so some of you when you think of relatives um oops my internet said am i still okay wendy all right so uh in terms of uh, our relatives it's not only other human beings but our relative are the four-legged animals the winged the water relatives right the root nation our plants you know stars a balanced interaction with mother earth so Mother Earth gives us all life. So we have that connection, all of us in some way. And are we treating Mother Earth with respect? So I think Mother Earth is a little angry right now because of all the fires and the floods and extreme temperatures. Uh, I think we need to make sure we do whatever we can to respect Mother Earth. And it's only logical to do so because she gives us life and sustainability. So again, when you think of indigenous knowledge, here we are at the center of our circle. And when you think center, don't think just two dimensional, it's multi-dimensional, you know, seven dimensions actually, when you think about it. So there's our connection in mother earth and here we are as individuals, as human beings. So that sacred being, that child is there. And many of you young people, I don't know if you think of yourselves as sacred beings, but you're very important for us elders because you're the next generation to carry on our culture, our family history, our uh, indigenous knowledge. So all of you are part of that. And this is just another way of looking at the world and how we fit in it as people, as human beings, as two-legged. So there we are, the star knowledge again. Uh, we see a lot of these things in uh, traditional buildings and things of that nature. And many new buildings are incorporating circular philosophy now so that uh, um, they're not just square buildings. And it just feels more connected to Mother Earth, to the stars and everything else. As you see here, 
those connections regarding architecture and Mother Earth and the star knowledge. So here we go again. I think Einstein was a tribal member in a past life. So Einstein had a traditional knowledge in my opinion. And when you think of uh, relativity, the theory of relativity, that's associated with star knowledge. And then look at the medicine wheel in Montana. Look at the Arizona tribes with the man in the maze in the middle. So all this is connected, thousands of years of knowledge, and Einstein was aware of that and utilized that in his uh, teachings and learnings. There's a hoop dancer. That's Mother Earth. That's the circle. That's balance. That's culture. There it is again, Mother Earth. You see the DNA strands. We're all part of a DNA strand, and look how it connects to Mother Earth when you think of weather, uh, the rotation of the Earth, uh, how we fit in the universe with planets and other uh, um, elements out there that are outside of just our physical world. So that's just kind of a, a deep thought, if you will. So, but it's part of uh, what I was taught from a culture. So what are your dreams? Think about your dreams. So my mm -hmm. dream was uh, football and Hollywood. And then, of course, I wanted to be a leader or something that impacted my people in a good way. And my people was my family, so my tribe, people with disabilities, that was my crew. My natives, my people with disabilities, that was my extended family. So there, my dream was athletics. So Jim Thorpe was a great um, role model for me as a, the greatest athlete in American history. He played professional football, professional baseball. He was a Olympic gold medalist champion. Uh, the King Gustav said from Sweden, you, sir, are the greatest athlete in the world. So again, he was a great role model to have, as well as Billy Mills. He won the Olympic gold medal, and he's an Oglala Lakota from my village, Kyle, South Dakota. So that was really cool seeing him and the only American in history to win this event. And so mm -hmm. it's wonderful to see that it was an Oglala Lakota kid from Pine Ridge Reservation that did that. There I am uh, on NBC playing in the Rose Bowl. And what a wonderful experience and dream that was for me to be part of a winning team, a team that they still give us attention for today as old men. We just had our 30th anniversary, 30 years, I can't believe it. But people still remember that game. And it's wonderful to be a part of that. And some of the experiences that I got to have in professional and college football was wonderful to live that dream. And uh, being in Sports Illustrated and things like that was really cool. But what I learned with athletics was how to work hard, how to uh, have teamwork and utilize that in my world of work today. So now I get, you know, I used to be really scared to talk in high school and even in college, I'd be sweating and I couldn't look up. I'd be just shaking with my paper and, you know, I was terrible, but my mom kept saying, you got to keep doing it, keep doing it. You know, even though you're afraid, never be afraid to keep trying. And now I make great money doing speeches all over the world. So suddenly now, something that I was so afraid of, people want me to speak. People are contacting me all over the world to teach. Universities in uh, the United Kingdom and in uh, different European countries want me to speak. So isn't that wonderful being a kid that was afraid to do that, learn how to be able to public speak and speak in front of thousands of people and be comfortable doing that? So that was something I had to learn to address that fear. We all have fears, but how can we face that fear? And usually family and friends are part of us helping to do that. Another dream of mine was Hollywood. So I wanted to be in the movies. So here I am as a stuntman and an actor in the movie, The Substitute. And these are different countries, uh, Spain, Portugal, uh, Germany, and America from the movie, The Substitute. Uh, back in the 90s. I still get checks, residual checks from Screen Actors Guild for work that I did 25 years ago. So again, that was a dream that I turned into a job. And there's me looking like a bad guy. So it's interesting that unfortunately, as an actor, I had to play these stereotyped roles. So that was frustrating for me as an educator. I'm yes. using my money uh, that I earned from Hollywood to pay for my education. So I had to play these bad guys because they didn't see me as an educator or an advocate or a president of the United States. There has yet to be a Native American president of the United States in Hollywood. But all the other cultures have had 
presidents in Hollywood. So someday we'll just skip over Hollywood and do it for real. So what do you think about that? <laughs> and here now, Jim, oh, go ahead. can I just, just jump in for a minute? Um, given the fact that we have another 10 minutes, well, I do want to make sure there's an opportunity for some um, uh, question answer. Um, the one thing I was wondering is, is there a chance you can share a little bit of information <clears throat> with our youth in regards to how all of um, the culture you're referring to that is so strong within who you are and then moving with that culture into your dreams. How is it that it, it has helped you get to work? How is it our youth can use their culture to stay strong within themselves, uh -huh. but then move to employment for themselves so that this is relatable and becomes a, a clear path for them as well? Yeah, and that's a great uh, question. And thanks for keeping me on task. 10 minutes, I better hurry. Of course. <laughs> yep. again, uh, it's all very interesting it's great oh, okay. i'm sure everybody I'll always wonder off me. you know that's <laughs> so uh, again uh, with uh, that culture and your dreams here's a slide of my current movie that's on amazon and uh, please go to amazon and give me five stars i'm trying to get on hbo and uh, bigger mm -hmm. platforms if possible but there's my dream and there's my culture right there on my dvd so you see uh, um, my mom, for instance, there she is. She's interviewed in my film. There you see is the graveyard of young kids that died at boarding schools. Uh, many thousands of Indian kids died at those schools and we can't forget them and the challenges that they had. And the challenges that you have give you strength. So even though it's frustrating and it just makes you mad sometimes, Think about the new strength and empowerment that you're getting to deal with some of that stuff that we have to sometimes as members of cultural groups. So again, here, uh, dreams, you know, that was self-worth. What is your self-worth? How do you feel about yourself? You know, self-esteem is what uh, we think of ourselves, but self-worth is knowing our value. You're empowered. So again, self-worth is in all of us. We're born with it in some way, but sometimes we can't find it. So how do we get that empowerment by knowing what that wor worth is? And we all have it. You may not see it now, but geez, even at 55 years old, I'm seeing, wow, that experience as a kid gave me some additional strength uh, today so I can deal with challenges. So it is in us. We just got to dig it out sometimes or dust it off or whatever it might be. But use whatever philosophy. I gave you an example of balance through medicine wheel philosophy, but there's many examples out there and use whatever works for you so that you can have that power of cultural knowledge. I'm a proud, strong Lakota man. And that's so it's such a wonderful thing to say today. And I'm able to look myself in the mirror and be a proud Lakota man and know that the footprints I'm leaving is going to make a difference for the future generations. And all of you have that skill. It may not be footprints, it might be wheelchair prints like my dad. You know, it might be a walker print. Whatever the situation you're in, you have that self-worth and power. And my dad was a great example of that. So thank you, dad, for giving me that strength. He's no longer with us, but boy, he's with me every day because he showed me what a person with a disability and great challenges could do in a society before ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act. So he was discriminated against, you know. I was an advocate before I even knew what the name was. So I was always going in the back of the restaurants and finding a way to get dad into the restaurant. So he's gonna eat in this restaurant. I don't care if there's stairs or not, he's gonna get in. So again, that's the self-worth and empowerment I got as a youth because my dad had used a wheelchair in a society that was not accessible to people in wheelchairs. So what a great experience that was for me as a young person to become an advocate before I even knew what it was. And now I use that today. So all of you have something in you, a life experience, and try to find that and use it for your dreams and goals and making it to that self-employment, creating your business. You know, you can do a business online. You guys are skilled with uh, the internet and geez, you can do, a, I'm making a whole movie on an iPhone right now. You can make a movie with an iPhone. Interview your grandparents, interview somebody and just get information about your family that you can use forever and you can share with your kids someday. So again, in Tribal Voc Rehab or Invoke Rehab, that's another empowerment structure that will help you get your dream, live your dreams through employment. So check into vocational rehabilitation because they can help you get through school and give you some uh, training for employment and helping build a business 
with pre-employment transition services. So that's something that you wanna look at uh, as another option and service. Why not use those services to benefit you and your future and your dreams? So use education, you know, I know some classes are boring and things, but you know, don't let them stop you. Get through that class, get the grade, extract what you can from school for your future and your life because that's what is going to really be the successful, sustainable element so that you can have jobs that you love in entrepreneurship. I never thought I'd be an entrepreneur, but here I am, you know? So again, I, I didn't have that confidence uh, early, but I got it and thank goodness sports gave me some of that confidence so I could transfer it into the academic world. And suddenly my grades got better. So I was just learning things on how we can do all this stuff so that we can look into what do you want for your own business? Wouldn't that be wonderful to be your own boss? You know, set your own time. You know, every time I do a new grant, I go, well, I deserve a raise, I'm gonna give myself a raise. So isn't that fun to give myself a raise? You know, I don't even have to ask anybody. So again, it's a wonderful world, uh, living your dreams through work. So what is your passion? You know, get into action, don't just dream about it. What can I do today to make a difference and to get there? Time management's used, business plans, think of the who, what, why, where, when. That's a business plan. It's just a story of what you wanna do in your business. Write that story out. Think about it in your mind. You know, what would I love to do for work? What can I do to benefit my people? You know, many of us have that passion that we want to represent our people in a good way. So again, business plans, tell that story, think about that. Uh, again, get into what can I do? What is the unique element? I know a youth group in Fort Washakie uh, Reservation made a whole new video of travel on the res. So now they're getting uh, people traveling to the reservation as a result of a youth video. So you guys can make an impact for the people. Be good in time management. It always seems impossible until it's done, Nelson Mandela said. Don't count the days, make the days count, Muhammad Ali said. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift, that's why they call it the future. So Kung Fu Panda even has great things to say. You know, so again, these are elements of whatever you can use to be funny. successful. <laughs> Any time in the day that you can accomplish something, even a little thing is going to add up. All those little things add up until suddenly you have all these skills or resources and abilities to be able to create your business. So use time effectively. Don't be wasting time all the time. I know video games are fun and you can make a business out of it, but maybe instead of video one night, I'm gonna read a book on a business plan. I'm gonna read a book on my culture and learn more about who I am. I'm gonna interview my grandparents and video it so I I have that information forever with my family root. Time savers, something. Every day, accomplish something. Never uh, do something where you're not doing something good, even if it's just cleaning your room, you know, doing something, calling grandma for five minutes, whatever it is, do something that makes a difference. So here we are with equality. We're getting to equity where everyone can see the game. Now, someday society will no longer have a fence and we will no longer have to look over a fence. We can just all be equal, truly equal and have access to society. You're part of that growth in this society. The young people are out there. You're gonna vote, you're gonna make a difference. You're participating in our society. We need your voice. We need your youthful exuberance and your passion and your dreams and make a difference for all of us. And when you look in the mirror, you know, motivation, initiative, you're representing your people, you respect others, you're obligated to living your dreams and you always remember your family and your ancestors. So will you make a good choice today? Say it in the mirror every day. I had my son write out his goal, so he had it in the mirror and I heard him talking to himself because from a, a physiological standpoint, if you're saying it, if you see and hear yourself saying it, then you have a responsibility to do it. So every night look in the mirror and say, what did I do today to make a difference? So go on and make a difference and I'll close out now. So have a good journey. We're excited for what you'll do. Palamia. <laughs>
Excellent. Thank you so much, Jim. We're right at 10 o'clock, but I'm going to just have us stay over just a couple of minutes, folks, because I want to make sure that any questions you folks have that we're able to respond to, um, I have um, uh, Jeff is still on here. And um, as we had mentioned, we wanted to be able to do another word cloud. At the beginning, we did one on what is culture, and then we're going to also do one now um, at the end. And we're really curious just to see um, what kind of a change in your definition or what your improved definition may be after being a part and listening to all of what Jim had to share here. Um, so in order to be able to respond to this question, we're going to have everybody offer their definition of diversity and um, just put in the, the passcode numbers um, 3174, 30 and 2. And um, we'll get a quick um, account on what your definition is here. Um, I just want to mention while you folks are on and adding this information into our Menti, we do have an evaluation uh, link that is going to be made available within the chat. Um, we have two different evaluation options. So if you are a youth, if you are a student and you are participating now, then you're going to be clicking the link that has youth. And then we also have a, um, a professional, an adult, um, a support person or a teacher um, link for um, an eval as well. And so if you are an adult and you are attending, then please use that link in order to complete our survey. And we really appreciate your participation. And feel free while folks are adding this definition um, into the Menti to also add any questions that you may have in the chat. And we'll be sure to make sure that we're responding to those too. And thank you very much for staying on just a couple of minutes with us. We really appreciate your participation and being here to take part. Awesome. Once again, well, well done. Yeah. These are some really, really good definitions here that you guys have that you're offering. So you have a very good understanding about diversity. Acceptance. We see that's a very common one. Somebody in the chat added different. Mm -hmm. And difference is beautiful. Mm. How boring would it be if we were all the same? <laughs> yeah. Let's see, we have somebody, um, Betty in the chat. Um, she's added variety and representation. Ah, also. very good. Mm -hmm. Another individual entered uh, unique. Mm -hmm. So far we have seven participants for the word cloud. So very good. Uh, these will be both. Uh, we should use them for posters for future presentations. So thank Absolutely. you for your participation. These are great. <laughs> and again, thank you for staying over a couple of minutes here, folks. If you have to jump off, we understand. We value your time. Mm -hmm. Sorry, again, I <laughs> go over time, but I just keep talking. <laughs> it's all relevant. It's all important. <laughs> We should all make sure we're taking a time and moment in order to hear this information, right? Yeah. Even if it is a little later. Oh, I like unique as well, you know, because not mm -hmm. only having race as a culture and every, uh, as a diversity element for me, you know, as my size as a young person. Well, even today, I'm a big person. But when I was in youth sports, usually I had a different uniform because I couldn't fit in kid sizes. I had to get men's sizes. So I'd be the one big kid with a different uniform on my little league team. So that was definitely unique. <laughs> so my culture is not only that, but it's big and tall people. <laughs> mm. Nothing wrong with big and tall. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'll vouch for that when I um, used to go into the grocery stores, right? And all the items are way up top. I'm always looking for a big and tall to help me reach yes, what I need. I've done that many times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Oh, thanks for the nice, I got my chat on. So thank you uh, for sharing folks. Mm -hmm. Appreciate the comments. And uh, again, thank for you for the work that you do. You're uh, impacting future generations. So the footprints that you're leaving is incredible. Never, never forget that you're impacting not only that youth, but families and future generations. So from a Lakota way, well done. <laughs> Wopila. <clears throat> Okay. Right. I love reading all these chat yeah, that's chats nice. coming in. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think we're good as far as our Mentimeter goes. We have um, we've had nine persons to be able to take part, and then a whole lot more in the chat there. So that was great. Thank you so much for taking part with that. Um, I am so glad that we had so many of you folks on and that you've enjoyed this presentation. And for those of you that are associated with the three schools working with our project, you have received the link in order to be able to log in to the focus session. So that will be happening in just a few minutes. We'll be taking a little bit of a break and then we'll be logging back in for the 10.15 to 10.45 for a few of you folks and feel free to reach out to me and email if you need to be able to get that uh, link or um, you know let me know here and um, thank you all for joining us and being a part of this presentation um, be looking for our other webinars um, on our website and on social media we will be putting out more notices for the upcoming um, we have uh, in November a whole um, series of four webinars on technology that we will be offering and in December, we have, um, I believe, another three, maybe four webinars coming up on a variety of topics. So please be looking for those as well. And um, thank you all for joining us today. It was wonderful to have you. And I look forward to seeing you all in the future. Thank you very much, Jim, to you for your wonderful presentation and being a part here today. Um, I know that this was very, very helpful and beneficial to so many folks. And, um, you know, we're, we're very grateful to have you here with us. Oh, and my PowerPoint, I believe, will be available. Uh, if folks are interested, f please feel free to use it and just get the information out there. And uh, you're mm -hmm. more than welcome to contact me by email as well. So that will be available. <clears throat> Excellent. Great. Thank you so much, everybody. It was nice to have you here. Yeah. We'll hey, see you, you again ones, in the future. Live your dreams. You're representing. You can make a difference. So we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Go, Go make a difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs>